Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. In this video, I'm going to talk about and test the throttle position sensor on this bike. This is an R1200RT, uh, but the throttle position sensor is used on a wide variety of models from BMW and, of course, also on other bike manufacturers. Now, BMW calls this the throttle valve switch potentiometer. Nobody else uses that terminology, so I'm going to stick with TPS or throttle position sensor. Now, what is a throttle position sensor or TPS? On a lot of vehicles, not just motorcycles, but cars as well, uh, there's an ECU and that computer is determining the air fuel mixture at any given moment. It uses a whole bunch of different sensors in order to get data so that it can judge what the air fuel ratio should be. One of those sensors is a throttle position sensor. Now on a carbureted bike, you won't find a throttle position sensor, but on any fuel injected bike, you will. And the reason is, as you're turning this throttle here, the computer needs to know what that input is so it can correctly calculate what the air-fuel ratio should be at any particular moment. So we're going to look at this throttle position sensor for this bike, but all of them work essentially the same way. They convert a mechanical movement to an electrical signal. The way they do that is that they are a potentiometer. In other words, there's a variable resistance. So depending on where I have this throttle, that's going to change mechanically inside the sensor and that will also change the uh, resistance inside the sensor. The sensor is supplied a reference voltage and that voltage is going to change depending on the internal resistance. So as I'm changing this throttle, it's moving mechanically inside the sensor. That's also changing the resistance inside the sensor and that will change the reference voltage. So the computer is getting a reference voltage signal that will change depending on the resistance. Now one thing I want us to understand right up front here is that when we're riding there is a certain range of the uh, grip here where we're most commonly going to spend our time. So yeah, if we really romp on it we're going to go all the way to the lock or if we're at idle we're at this lock but most of the time we're spending you know somewhere in the middle here. And that's important to understand because when a throttle position sensor fails, a lot of time it fails because um, the resistance in that area where we spend the most time is, is failing. And there, there's a mechanical reason for that. So that is something you want to look at. The area where you spend the most time in your throttle is typically where it fails most often. All right, I'm going to get all this fairing off and I have to do some other work anyway. So once the throttle position sensor is exposed, we'll go into that in more depth. To locate the throttle position sensor, I have the um, fairing off here. We're on the left side of the bike, okay? We come down here. Here's the cylinder head. Here's where the throttle body is. And right here is the sensor that we're talking about. Now there's an electrical connector at the bottom and the mechanical connection is inside this little housing right here. There are two screws. If you wanted to remove the sensor completely, you take these two screws out and just pull this out. For our testing here, we do not need to remove it. So I'm just going to leave that in place. To remove this electrical connector at the bottom, there's a kind of a spring-loaded little device here. I'm going to push that in and then I can wiggle this loose. All right. And you'll see there are three connectors there. I'm going to refer to the one here on the left as the left connector. That's the right connector and, of course, the middle connector. Now, one thing I want to check before I even check uh, the throttle position sensor itself is the reference voltage. Because if the reference voltage is wrong, then I've got a problem even before I get to the sensor. Now, if I turn the bike on with this connector disconnected, the bike is going to complain. It's going to leave a little error message on the dash. That's not the end of the world. You can either reset it with a GS911 if you own one, or if you don't, after a certain amount of um, restarts, after you reconnect this, that code will clear. But I do want to check this reference voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a meter on this. It's the left one right here, that I, the left connector right here that I'm concerned about. I'm going to put one probe there, and I'm going to put the other probe on my negative terminal of the battery. And what I want to see is 5 volts. All right, I'm going to turn my key to the on position. And then I'm going to put one probe on that left side there. And I'm going to hold my other probe on the negative terminal of the battery. 
and I'm getting 5.03 volts. So I know that is a good reference voltage. Now I'm going to hold my probe on the left side and on the far right side and I should get a similar voltage and I am. I'm getting 5.01 so that's a good reference voltage. I know my voltage is good. So on the left side there is the reference voltage on the right side is the ground. Now if we look at the bottom of the actual sensor I have the corresponding pins here and again this side is the left, this side is the right and I have a middle sensor. Now I want to put some alligator clips on those uh, terminals so that I can measure the resistance of this unit itself. So I'm going to use these alligator clips just for access and I'm going to put one on the middle terminal and I'm going to put the other one on the left terminal. Now the other ends of my alligator clips I'm going to connect to the meter probes don't worry about polarity, I just want a resistance reading. So we're connected and the throttle is at the idle position and I'm getting 3.68 kilo ohm. Now I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to take the throttle and I'm going to start to move the throttle. So watch that scale move and I'm going to take my throttle and I'm just going to start moving it. I can't even see the meter right now but you should be seeing the meter change. Now I have the throttle at full lock. So that's reading about one point, well, about one kilo ohm. So don't get too hung up on the numbers, but something in that general range is what you want to see. BMW does not publish these numbers. I'm just telling you this is a good unit, and that's the readings that I'm getting. Now, we haven't really tested this throttle position sensor yet for the biggest problem that we see, which is that there can be data dropouts in certain ranges. Remember earlier I said, uh, when you have the throttle in, in most use, it's going to be in a very particular range. And that's where you'll get wear in the sensor um, and you'll get data dropouts. So we really want to check for that. And a digital meter is really not the best way of checking for that. Instead, I want to use an old-fashioned analog meter because as I change the throttle position, I will see that needle move back and forth. And it's a lot easier to see if that needle suddenly jumps or is kind of wiggly as it's going, then that's data dropouts and we don't want to see that. So an analog meter like this can be a lot easier to read than a digital meter. So let me take my alligator clips off of the digital meter and now I'll put them on the analog meter instead. And now I've got a reading on my analog meter. Again, I'm not too concerned about the actual number. What I want to see is that needle moving very smoothly as I turn the throttle. If I see that needle jump or you know, wiggle like that, then I've got a problem. So I'm going to try to do this one-handed here and not move the camera. So now I've got the throttle and I'm just going to start moving it very slowly and you'll see that needle move smoothly in this case. That's full lock. Now I'm going to let it go slowly and that needle is moving very smoothly. So that's good. I know this unit is good. As I turn this back and forth, I can go a little bit faster now. I can see that needle move back and forth nice and smoothly. So as long as you don't see any jumps there or any particular spot, like right here is where I would spend most of my time when I'm riding, and I don't want to see any you know, needle movement there that's jumpy. So this all looks very good. So this is a good sensor, I know that. And these two meters have been very helpful, but there is one other way we can check this and that is to use a GS911 scanner and we can look at the live data. In other words, the data that the computer itself is seeing. Now that data is subject to some of the same issues um, as far as digital readout. In other words, we're going to be looking at a number and it's kind of difficult to see sometimes uh, if there is a problem with the sensor. But if we think the sensor is probably good and we're doing something else with the scanner anyway, it only takes a few seconds to look at the live data and see if it looks okay. If it doesn't look okay or we suspect there's something wrong, we can go back to this analog meter here. So let me show you how it looks on this GS911 scanner. All right, I have my GS911 connected to the computer. And as I predicted, there are faults detected. That's because we had that disconnected while I had that on. So it's giving me a throttle position sensor faulty. We know that's not true, that's just because I had to disconnect it. So I'll just clear that and then we can go on with our testing. Now if we look at our available real-time values, 
There's a whole bunch here and we can check what we want and what we don't want. The thing I'm interested in is the throttle valve position. So right now I have the key on but not the bike running and right here is the throttle valve position if you can see that. I'm just going to take my hand and just spin this throttle and just take a look at that. I'm, I'm going to go slowly but you're going to see it's going to change so quickly. See there's you can see it's registering in a percentage. So let me go all the way. That's all the way locked. So I am at 100%, which is good. That's what you want to see. And if I let this go all the way back to idle, I'm at 0%. So that's good. And if I just go to the area where I would probably normally be when I'm just cruising around, I'm at, eh, around 40-50% in that range. So you can see this is somewhat useful. In other words, you want to know that the computer is seeing lock to lock, 0 and 100% or something near that. Uh, but it's not so helpful as far as finding out if there are data dropouts or something in the sensor itself. For that, you really need to go back to that analog meter. So that's how you test your throttle position sensor. You want to test that the reference voltage is around 5 volts or very near it. Um, you're going to look for corrosion or any, uh, any dirt or anything like that in there as well. And then besides that, we just test this alone. We want to make sure using our analog meter that we don't see that needle jumping around or dropping out suddenly because that would indicate a mechanical fault inside the sensor and the sensor is no good. And then we can also test using a digital meter if that's all you have. Uh, if you have a scale, that will help and you can ch check the readings itself. Again, BMW does not publish those readings, but you can see from what I got, uh, this is a known good unit, so it probably is going to be something similar to that. And if you do all these tests and this comes out all right, then you need to look elsewhere if you're having some kind of problem. All right, one last little thing here. If you replace that sensor or remove it and put it back, whatever it is, uh, the computer may not know where the locks are. In other words, it doesn't know where zero is and where 100% throttle is. It is self-learning, so if you just put that sensor back in and start riding, the computer will eventually learn where idle is and you know where full lock is. However, if you want to speed that along, the procedure is said to be this. You turn the key to the on position, not running, but just the key to the on position, and immediately turn this lock to lock three times and then turn the key back off. And that is said to help the computer learn instantly where the locks are. Whether this works on every single bike, I don't know actually, but it does seem to have some success for a lot of people, so it certainly can't hurt to try. Otherwise, just let the computer learn on its own and it will do it eventually.